Be faithful to yourself alone first. When I was looking into the male-female relation, what aspect is this still needed to be explained? This is what came up. Be faithful to yourself alone first. Always be faithful to yourself first. This is the first and the foremost thing. Instead of being faithful to the other or demanding the other to be faithful to you. Normally this is what we have learned that the other has to be faithful to you. But we forget in that are you faithful to yourself, honest to yourself. Your only responsibility is your growth, your transformation. If you are transformed, everything around gets transformed. The first and the foremost thing in a dark room, you bring a bulb, bulb is connected to the socket, it is turned on, its faith, bulb's faithfulness, it has nothing to do with anything else. It has nothing to do with darkness, it has nothing to do with anything with the room where it is being placed. Its quality is to illumine and the moment it gets illumined, everything becomes alive. The moment sun rises, it comes on the horizon. The birds begin to chirp. It is not inviting the birds to chirp. It is not inviting the flowers to blossom. That is understood. The moment sun will rise, birds will begin to chirp. They have their own inner sense of when to start chirping in the night, they do not. Very rarely or randomly, in the middle of the night, you may hear a solitary bird chirping, but not en masse. Flowers blossom the moment sun begins to rise. So sun is faithful to itself. And when you are faithful to yourself, you will realize that everything begins to fall in its place. Instead, we choose the wrong direction, wrong question, wrong answer and seek the answer to the wrong question. If you are not faithful to you, then doubt will arise in your mind about the faithfulness of the other. It is very delicate. Try to understand this. In the first place, why you should ask the other should be faithful to you. When you want other to be faithful to you, doubt is bound to arise. The very desire that your wife should be faithful to you or your husband should be faithful to you is the beginning of doubt. Why? Who are you to say that she should be faithful to you? Or you should be faithful to her? Instead, it is very important you should be faithful to yourself and no one else. And this applies to both the partners. That is what love is. Love means you are faithful and honest to yourself. If you love the woman or the man, you should like her or him to be faithful to herself or himself because you would like the other to be authentic. Only a person who is honest and faithful to himself or herself can be authentic. 
you would like the other to be an individual in his or her own right. Why should you demand that he or she should be faithful to you? Who are you? Just a stranger. None need to be faithful to the other instead you have learned the art of being faithful to yourself. This is my basic approach. It has to be understood well. Down the ages it has been said, be faithful to your husband, be faithful to your wife, and relations fall apart when we realize that the other is not faithful to you. You have been asked to be faithful to your husband, to your wife, and be faithful to this and that. Has anyone ever told you be faithful just to yourself? That is the beginning. And that is exactly what my message is, be faithful to yourself. Only then doubt disappears. Doubt is not good. Remember doubt is a byproduct of a desire and that too a wrong desire. That one should be faithful to the other. And how can you accept anybody to be faithful to you? In that very expectation, you are asking something so unnatural that doubt is bound to arise. Although we go on saying that the other has to be faithful to us, yet still many times doubt arises. And the moment doubt arises, there comes a crevice in the relationship. Who knows? She may come across a beautiful man, far more beautiful than you are. Or he may come across someone who is more beautiful than you are. And you know there are men who are more beautiful. So too, there are far more beautiful women as well. Fear, doubt are bound to be there. Who knows, she may be getting fed up with you or you may be getting fed up with her. Because the moment two people start living together, you discover their anatomy, physiology, their habits. And then slowly and slowly you get accustomed to it. You take these for granted and then one day you become fed up. You know that when you ask something the response will be in a particular way. You know what will be the response. In fact there is every possibility that you yourself are fed up with yourself but this we do not realize. You know how ugly you are, how ugly your habits are she must have come to know this by now or you may have come to know this by now. Oh, he must have come to know your naggingness, naggings and trivia. In the beginning things are different. When you meet a man or a woman on the beach just for a few hours, things are different. The full moon creates great illusions and the ocean and the cool and the fresh breeze rustling through the palm and coconut trees on the shore and the silence and the night and the unknown territory of the man and woman. It is said, all love stories begin by the sight of the river, waterfall, beach, in such places and then end up near a mountain that is constantly erupting. 
she is unknown to you you are unknown to her certainly both would like to explore each other's geographies that is the first and the foremost thing that we look into you are tremendously interested she is and he too is but once you have traveled the geography so many times the same contours the same ways one is bound to get fed up of nagging and habits because there is nothing newness in it we take one another for granted you know you are fed up with your wife and she is fed up with her husband so deep down the doubt arises that she may be fed up with you you do not ask for faithfulness instead ask for freedom give freedom so that you can have freedom and if out of freedom you go on loving each other it is beautiful out of freedom everything has beauty and without freedom everything becomes ugly and meaningless freedom is one of the most important criteria for love to blossom but we always have doubt if we give freedom what will happen but out of a certain duty if she even remains faithful to you it has no value so to if you out of compulsion remain faithful to her again it has no value when she comes across a beautiful man on the road and a longing arises in her heart to know this man to be with this man but she knows she this is not right she represses it she has already gone away she is no more with you you may be holding her hand in your hand and she is no more with you her whole being has gone in that moment she may not ever do anything but in her fantasy in her imagination you cannot control fantasy you cannot control her imagination in her dreams she may be making love to the other person and who makes love to one's own husband in a dream certainly no one who makes love to his wife in dream no one have you ever heard of such a foolish woman or a man who makes love to her husband or wife in dreams have you ever made love to your own wife in dreams never because there is no need one always makes love to the other person's wife in dreams one always makes love to other person's husband in dream in dreams you are free and private you are constantly thinking and whatever you are thinking begins to uncoil during the dreams the magistrate is not there the policeman is not there the wife is not there nobody is there you are again free so just on the surface you can fulfill formalities the doubt is arising because you have a wrong expectation in the first place i cannot help you to drop the doubt unless you drop the desire that your wife should be faithful to you or your husband drop the desire that your wife or husband should be faithful to you drop that and then if you can create the doubt it will be a miracle you cannot then how can doubt arise we never go to the very root of the problem we only go on changing the symptoms my help is available to you only to go 
to the deep root of the problem, to the very foundation of it, change it at the root, at the base. And you ask, I know for sure that my wife is utterly faithful to me. How can you be so sure? Or you say my husband is utterly faithful to me. How can you be so sure? You are just trying to convince yourself by using these words that I am sure. Just using the great words to hide something, you are not sure. See the cunningness of the mind. You are not sure, hence you are using the word sure. I know for sure my wife or my husband is utterly faithful to me. You go on convincing yourself. Just faithfulness would not do. Utterly faithful? Is there some doubt? Why you have to say utterly faithful? A circle is simply a circle. You cannot say that this is a complete circle or utterly circular. If it is a circle, it is a circle. You cannot call it a perfect circle because if it is not perfect, it is not a circle. Circle has a certain geometry that makes it a circle. It must be something else. Watch, meditate on these words. When you say another geographical space, a square or rectangle, there is a basic definition of a square, a space that have all the sides equal. Rectangle when the two sides of the length are same and the width are same, then it is a rectangle. Can it be said that this is almost a perfect square or perfect circle or a perfect center? You cannot call an eclipse a perfect center or near about or near about a circle, but still you say, I doubt. Somewhere doubt goes on lingering. You doubt your wife, you doubt your husband. Are you certain about your faithfulness about her? Or she is certain about her faithfulness towards you? Maybe that is why she, the doubt arises. You may be fooling around. If not actually, then in imagination. And then naturally the interference is there. Your wife may be fooling around as well. If not actually, at least in imagination. And the male ego is such that it cannot allow even the wife to fool around in imagination. The story is told of Mullah Nasruddin who got married and is, uh, spent a pleasant honeymoon with his bride. But one day he came to his office with a rather grim, glum expression on his face. When his fellow clerks inquired what is bothering him, he said, gee, I pulled a terrible, something terrible this morning, getting out of bed. I, like an absent-minded jackass, laid down a 10 rupee, 10 dollar note on the table. The other man consoled him. His wife would not think anything of it, just assured him. That isn't what bothers me, he answered. She gave me three dollars change. It may be your own mind. When a beautiful woman passes, does something happen to you or not? Only in two cases will nothing happen. 
either you are dead or enlightened which means the same otherwise something is bound to happen and then the suspicion the same must be happening to your woman as well because she is as unenlightened as you are and as alive as you are maybe the doubt is there because you are not loving her as much as she would like her like you to love her and it happens to couples how can you go on having the same peak of love and it happens to couples how can you go on having the same peak of love that was there in the beginning the honeymoon peak one has come down sooner or later one has to come down from the hills to the ordinary mundane life the day to day life sooner or later one has to forget all poetry of love fantasy of love romance in love and ask and then a fear arises maybe i am not taking as much care as i should maybe this will become an opportunity husband comes home and is and finds his wife in bed with a man he is furious and wants to leave at once the wife pleads give me a moment to explain This man came to my door an hour ago and asked for something to eat. I gave him a sandwich. I noticed that his shoes were worn out. So I looked into your closet and found a pair that you haven't had on your feet for the five years. I gave him the shoes to put on. Then I saw that his jacket was also torn. So I went back to your closet and found a jacket that you haven't worn for 8 years. When he took his old jacket off to put on yours, I saw his shirt was falling to pieces. So I opened your drawer and gave him a shirt that you haven't worn for the last 12 years. Then this man was going out of the door He turned to me and asked if there anything else around here that your husband does not use it is not a question of your wife it is a question of your mind just look deep down have you been to her for how long have you been with her I don't mean physically I mean spiritually I mean meditatively for how long have you not seen her face how long have you not seen her emotionally just to remember for how long have you not looked into her eyes figure it out and you will be surprised that for years you have not taken her for that for years you have taken her for granted and she has taken you for granted and that may be the cause of your doubt remember problems are always part of your mind go deep into them problems are always part of your mind remember this write somewhere that you can see it always can remember it always problems are always part of your mind go deep into them in the first place do not ask that she should be faithful to you that is violent nobody has the right to ask anyone to be faithful towards him or her help her to be faithful towards her 
and secondly look inside your own being are you still in love with her if you are then the doubt is not possible the doubt simply reflects that your love has disappeared life has become a trap you have started taking her for granted love is no more there now it is only a hangover hence the doubt arises bring the love back bring the poetry back bring the romance back and those who are intelligent they can bring it back every day every morning they can look at their wife or husband with fresh eyes go on dying to the past experience this can happen only meditatively only if meditation is at the background so that you can remain available to the present fresh young and utterly intelligent then life has a totally different flavor then these stupid things will not arise in your mind at all certainly 